There have been many appearances of various spacecraft in the re-imagined Battlestar Galactica science fiction television series, with the primary means of travel being FTL. Topic: Ships. Topic: Adrastea. A ship in the refugee fleet, named after Adrastea, in Greek mythology, was a nymph who was charged by Rhea to raise the infant Zeus in secret to protect him from his father Cronus. Topic: Adriatic. The Adriatic is one of the few civilian ships in the refugee fleet equipped with weapons. The ship was armed with at least a battery of ship-to-ship -ship missiles. The reason for its armament was to protect the fleet while the Galactica was off on missions such as the attack on the Tylium asteroid. The Adriatic joined Laura Roslin's splinter group of ships that go against Adama's orders and returns to the planet Kobol to find the tomb of Athena. The Adriatic provides defense until the Galactica rejoins the fleet. The Adriatic is eventually lost while being escorted by Brendan Hot Dog Costanza through a star cluster in the episode The Passage. Topic <laughs> Ether. A ship in the refugee fleet named after Ether in Greek mythology is one of the protogenos. Amduat A ship in the refugee fleet named after the ancient Egyptian Amduat, which literally means, "...that which is in the afterworld". Argo Navis A ship in the refugee fleet whose captain was selected to be a judge at Balta's trial. Argo Navis was a large southern constellation representing the Argo, the ship used by Jason and the Argonauts in Greek mythology. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Astral Queen. The Astral Queen is a prisoner transport ship. There were 1500 prisoners on board, a figure retconned from 500 the Astral Queen was transporting prisoners from Sagittarian to their parole hearings on Caprica at the time of Cylon attack and is one of the vessels that manages to regroup with President Roslin's refugee fleet. Viewed as another transport ship, albeit one with slightly undesirable cargo, none of the government personnel that survived the assault knew that it was carrying Tom Zarek, a dangerous political prisoner and anti-government terrorist. Following an attack on the fleet water supply, Captain Lee Apollo Adama is dispatched to the ship in order to enlist the prisoners to help transport water from an icy moon that has been found nearby. After greeting the prisoner's spokesman, Tom Zarek, the prisoners break out of their cells and hijack the ship. They surrender when Apollo agrees to Zarek's demands, which are to hold a fair election for a new president at the end of Roslin's term. In return, Apollo leaves Zarek's men in control of the Astral Queen, against the wishes of both President Roslin and Commander Adama. The Astral Queen becomes the focus of several incidents within the fleet. First, repair crews made up of the vessel's ex-convicts begin to operate in competition with those organized by the government. For these efforts, Tom Zarek becomes the Sagittarian representative in the reformed Quorum of Twelve. From there, Zarek makes a failed bid at the vice presidency. After Laura Roslin is stripped of her presidency by Commander Adama, and martial law is declared in the fleet, the Astral Queen becomes the flagship of a splinter group of 24 ships departing the fleet for Kobol. The crews and passengers of these ships are supporters of Laura Roslin's presidency, and she is aboard the Astral Queen when it jumps away from the fleet. The Splinter Fleet rejoins Galactica and her fleet after Commander Adama and President Roslin resolve their differences. The same ship design appears in the original series, where it is known simply as the 
prison barge, but serves the same basic function as it does in the reimagining. Count Balta spends most of the latter part of the series imprisoned on the prison barge. According to Ronald D. Moore, the Astral Queen is named for a passenger ship mentioned in the original Star Trek episode, The Conscience of the King, which is his favorite episode of the original series of Star Trek. That ship was in turn named for the ship which serves as the centerpiece of Isaac Asimov's short story, Marooned Off Vesta. Atlantia In the events of the miniseries, after the destruction of Colonial Fleet headquarters on Picken in the first wave of the Cylon attack, Admiral Nagala takes command of the fleet from the Atlantia. Atlantia is one of the first battlestars to engage the Cylons after the attack. The Atlantia is newer and more advanced than the Galactica, and has an integrated computer network running Dr. Gaius Balta's command navigation program, which allows the Cylons to infiltrate the system and cripple the vessel. As a result, Atlantia is easily destroyed by the Cylons over the planet Vergon. Episodes of the reimagined series establish that William Adama served on the Battlestar Atlantia as a major, where he had an ongoing feud with that ship's landing signal officer that inspired a celebration of his thousandth landing. Chief Galen Tyrrell says he also served on board the Atlantia prior to his assignment to the Galactica. Topic: <laughs> Aurora. A ship in the refugee fleet. Named after Aurora, in Roman mythology, the goddess of the dawn. Asimenarius One of the ship names visibly shown listed on the presidential election voting whiteboard on Colonial One in the episode, Lay Down Your Burdens. Part two. Bar Packle A freighter among the fleet that had a pair of outdated DDG-62 engines that Chief Tyrrell acquired to power his Blackbird stealth fighter in Flight of the Phoenix. Boreas One of the ship names visibly shown listed on the presidential election voting whiteboard on Colonial One in the episode, Lay Down Your Burdens. Part two. <laughs> <laughs> Botanical Cruiser Also called, Agro Ships. These vessels are nothing more than massive greenhouses filled with all varieties of plants and animals from the colonies. These vessels carry geodesic glass bio-domes. Each dome has an «environmental theme» simulating arid deserts to tropical jungles. Two botanical cruisers are part of Roslyn's original refugee fleet during the Cylon attack. One of the botanical cruisers was a sublight vessel and has to be abandoned when the Cylons discover the fleet. In the original series, the botanical ship appears as a long red painted scaffold with several domes affixed at one end. This is a reuse of the models from the 1972 Universal film Silent Running. The botanical ships in the reimagined series have been redesigned with seven domes now covering the entire length of the top hull and another eight along the underside. Topic: <laughs> Brennick. The Brennick was a small military vessel with a crew complement of 75. It was a former posting of Colonel T, who served aboard her as an enlisted gunner's mate and still a teenager during the second year of the Cylon War. The Brennick was attacked and boarded by Cylon centurions, leaving only 20 survivors T included. The bloody hand-to-hand -hand shipboard combat that ensued left T with mental scars that would last for the rest of his life. Karina 
The Carina is a salvage and repairs flat-top ship that appears to have been lost during the dangerous transit of a star cluster in the episode, The Passage. The ship was being escorted by Luan Cat Katrain. Topic: <laughs> Cassandra. One of the ship names visibly shown listed on the presidential election voting board in episode Lay Down Your Burdens, Part Two. Topic: <laughs> Celestra. <laughs> Celestra is a deep space exploration vessel filled with scientific laboratories, research equipment and advanced sensor systems. It also features a long-range FTL drive for distant travel and designed to function for years without resupply of fuel reserves and life support. The Celestra appeared several times in fleet shots throughout the series but was not given a central storyline. The craft appears to be a carryover design similar in appearance to the Electronics ship, also called the Celestra that was seen in the original series. Topic. Cryon A passenger liner similar in design to the Olympic carrier and Pixis, that was successfully guided by Cat through the star cluster in the episode, The Passage. It was first mentioned in the episode, Lay Down Your Burdens, Part 1, on the list of ballots. Topic. Cloud 9 Cloud 9 was a massive vessel of unusual design that contained a five-star restaurant, theater, casino, several bars, and numerous hotel rooms and luxury suites. Its most notable feature was a huge biodome which contained a pressurized natural habitat nearly a quarter mile in diameter that simulated an outdoor park. The dome was mounted to the starboard side of the ship's main hull by a V-shaped pylon structure which supported a spoon-shaped bow that contained the hotel. Behind the hotel section was a separately attached crew module which also contained the ship's hangar bay, command bridge, engineering, and sublight, FTL drive engines. Directly under the saucer dome were another set of drive engines. Inside the dome, many varieties of trees and plants from the twelve colonies were grown on the grounds and were cared for by a dedicated gardening staff. The dome also contained an artificial lake used for swimming. At the center of the park was a large auditorium structure used for gatherings and festivals. This building was used by Laura Roslin as the meeting place for the new Quorum of Twelve after the Cylon attack on the colonies. The dome used any natural sunlight that was available, in an attempt to replicate the atmospheric conditions of a planet's sky. However, Cloud Nine was still a spaceship, and didn't really live up to the quality of a real planet, as there were some flaws in the design, such as fake terrain used to disguise the machinery as well as the easily noticeable and massive support beams of the Sky Dome. Despite this, Cloud Nine was judged to be one of the nicer places to live in the colonial fleet. The ship was primarily used as a hotel and resort which had hosted various diplomatic functions and been the site of a terrorist assassination plot against President Laura Roslin, most notably during an electoral meeting for the Quorum of Twelve Council, in which the radical Tom Zarek attempted to manipulate the council into voting him into the position of vice president. The ship had an open port policy and did not keep track of those who came and went, which caused numerous security problems and allowed members of the terrorist group, demand peace, to use it as a base of operations. Even President Roslin herself fled to Cloud Nine during Commander Adama's military coup. Cloud Nine was destroyed in the season two finale episode, Lay Down Your Burdens, Part Two along with at least three other ships including a Colonial Movers freighter. A nuclear warhead, which was given to the Cylon agent Gina by then Vice President Gaius Balta, was used to destroy the ship. The shock wave from the nuclear explosion left behind an identifiable signature that was discovered by a Cylon patrol one light year away. 
One year after the destruction of the ship, the signature led a Cylon invasion force to New Caprica. Climene One of the ship names visibly shown listed on the presidential election voting whiteboard on Colonial One in the episode, Lay Down Your Burdens, Part 2. Several deities and women in Greek mythology are named Clymene. Coba One of the ship names visibly shown listed on the presidential election voting whiteboard on Colonial One in the episode, Lay Down Your Burdens, Part 2. Colonial One, Colonial Heavy 798 Colonial One is a civilian starship that serves as the headquarters for the President of the Twelve Colonies. It is a small, FTL-capable ship that is dwarfed by the Battlestar Galactica, the ship can easily dock within one of Galactica's flight pods. Colonial One can also land on and take off from a planetary surface. Prior to the Cylon attack on the Twelve Colonies, Colonial One is a Capricorn civilian starliner known as Colonial Heavy 798. The ship had been chartered by the colonial government to transport then Secretary of Education Laura Roslin and her staff to the Battlestar Galactica's decommissioning ceremony. The interior and the uniforms of the flight hostesses in the miniseries are evocative of the Pan American Space Liner of 2001, a space odyssey, with the livery being an amalgam of those of Pan American World Airways and the U.S. Air Force's executive transport fleet. The balance shifts towards the latter when the Colonial Seal is added to the fuselage, paralleling the U.S. presidential arms on SAM 26000 and its successors. Following the Cylon attack, along with the elimination of most of the government, Laura Roslin becomes the president of the Twelve Colonies. The ship takes on the call sign Colonial One, and is used to coordinate the collection and organization of the civilian refugee fleet. After leading the 50,000 survivors to rendezvous with Galactica, which survives the attack, Colonial One becomes the residence and de facto capital of the fleet government. Although the call sign is based on the real-world United States protocol of referring to any Air Force, Marine Corps, Army, Navy, Coast Guard, or civilian aircraft as, respectively, Air Force One, Marine One, Army One, Navy One, Coast Guard One, or Executive One, when the President is aboard, Colonial One retains this moniker throughout the series, irrespective of the President's presence or absence and is never again referred to as Colonial Heavy 798, apart from during a flashback to before the Holocaust. Likewise, neither Galactica nor any other vessel adopts the name when the President is aboard. After the discovery and colonization of New Caprica, Colonial One is landed on the planet's surface and serves as the residence and office of Gaius Balta, who becomes president just prior to the colonization. As such, it is captured in the Cylon occupation. During the liberation of New Caprica and the evacuation of its human population, Colonial One is recaptured from the Cylons and leaves the planet with Laura Roslin aboard. Gaius Balta is left behind with the Cylon occupation forces. The ship becomes the seat of legislative authority as well, with Cloud Nine, destroyed by the nuclear warhead which Balta had given to Gina in Vier. The reconstituted Quorum of Twelve hold their meetings at a conference table aboard Colonial One. Most of the Quorum are assassinated aboard the ship by Tom Zarek during his coup d'etat. Only those absent from the meeting, such as Lee Adama, escape. Colonial One is ultimately destroyed after finding a new Earth. On Admiral Adama's orders, Galactica and the rest of the fleet are directed into the Sun by Anders. Columbia There seem to have been at least two ships named Battlestar Columbia mentioned in the Re-Imagined series. 
The first Columbia mentioned is in the miniseries as one of the Battlestars lost along with the Battlestars Triton and Solaria during the Cylon sneak attack on the colonies. During the regular series, it is mentioned that William Adama served on the Columbia as executive officer after his reinstatement in the colonial fleet and prior to his taking command of the Battlestar Valkyrie. The second Columbia is apparently the ship's predecessor, appearing in the Battlestar Galactica, Razor movie. This Columbia appeared of a similar design to Galactica and is destroyed in a battle with Cylon base stars during Operation Raptor Talon over a planet where the Cylons are found experimenting on human subjects. Cyberly A freighter within the fleet that appears in Battlestar Galactica, the plan as the ship of Cylon No. 4, Simon, lives on with his wife Gianna and stepdaughter Jemmy. Brother Cavill, who is trying to fulfill his plan of annihilating the human race, becomes angry when he finds out Simon has married a human. As Cavill passes orders to the Cylons in the fleet, he tells Simon to blow up the Cybele, but Simon requests his wife and child be spared. Cavill refuses, in fact stating the death of the woman and child will prevent him from ever knowing that Simon is really a Cylon. Simon returns to the Cybele, but commits suicide by jettisoning himself out an airlock. His version was not uploaded to the resurrection ship because it was too far away. The vessel was mentioned several times in the series but was not seen until the plan although a ship resembling it and Skilla did appear in several fleet shots in Season 4. Topic. Cylon Base Star Base stars were the main warships of the Cylon fleet. In the reimagined series, they had a distinctive star-shaped appearance resembling knucklebones which were pieces from a game shown being played by Starbuck the reimagined series. They doubled as both carriers for Cylon raiders and as battleships, employing heavy weapon turrets and missile batteries. In the original series, base stars appeared as two sources connected on top of each other by a central shaft. This design also appeared in the reimagined series as early models of base stars used during the First Cylon War. Topic: Cylon Colony. The Cylon Colony was a massive space station that appeared in the episode Daybreak and was used as a base by the last of the Cylons as they pursued the colonial refugee fleet. The base was mobile, having left its original position somewhere near the original star system of the Twelve Colonies and parked by Cavill in orbit around a black hole somewhere nearer to the Earth the colonial refugees eventually settle upon. The station was built of organic-looking material and had a design that was vastly different in appearance from other Cylon spacecraft featured in the series. From a distance, the colony appeared to look like a giant spiky crab or insect-like creature floating in space. The station resided inside a thick field of asteroids in a treacherous swirling orbit around the Singularity, and getting to the station required such precise jump coordinates that the Battlestar Galactica had to jump right on top of it during the operation to rescue the Cylon hybrid child Hera Agathon. Cavill had kidnapped Hera in hopes her hybrid DNA held the secrets to his people's survival. When the Galactica jumped in, the ship immediately came under heavy fire by a series of gun and missile turrets defending the colony, as well as a swarm of raiders. After Anders hacks the colony's hybrid and shuts down the turrets, the Galactica proceeded to punch a hole into the colony by crashing through the hull, whereupon the Colonials, along with the help of rebel Centurions, stormed the base to rescue Hera. The colony was eventually destroyed by nukes launched from a Raptor piloted by Racetrack, who although was killed when the Raptor was penetrated by a meteoroid, her hand manages to activate the missile controls when her Raptor is bumped by another passing rock. Topic. Cylon Freighter 
Two unidentified ships appear alongside a Cylon base star as it orbits the planet Kobol in the episode, Kobol's Last Gleaming, and are assumed to be freighters of some kind. Their design is roughly similar to the Cylon Tanker, which was a ship that appeared in episodes of the original Battlestar Galactica series. Topic. Darumazu Darumazu is featured in the episode, Epiphanies, and is a Tylium processing vessel which refines raw Tylium ore into fuel vital for the fleet. The Mozu is damaged in a suicide bombing by the terrorist group, Demand Peace, who want the violence with the Cylons to stop, but later repaired. Topic. Dashur One of the ship names visibly shown listed on the presidential election voting whiteboard on Colonial One in the episode, Lay Down Your Burdens, Part 2. Topic. Demetrius The Demetrius is a sewage recycling ship within the fleet, first mentioned in the episode, Lay Down Your Burdens, Part 2. In the episode, Six of One, the ship was secretly appropriated by Admiral Adama and given to Starbuck for her mission to find a route back to Earth. It is later damaged when the Cylon fighter that it was docking with exploded killing gunnery sergeant Aaron Mathias. Topic: <inaudible> Diomedes. One of the ship names visibly shown listed on the presidential election voting board in episode Lay Down Your Burdens Part 2. Topic. Embla Brock One of the ship names visibly shown listed on the presidential election voting board in episode, Lay Down Your Burdens, Part 2. Topic. In Kitty One of the ship names visibly shown listed on the presidential election voting board in episode, Lay down your burdens, part two. Topic: Ephime. One of the ship names visibly shown listed on the presidential election voting board in episode "Lay down your burdens," part two. Topic: Faru Sadin. The Faru Sadan is a civilian vessel first seen in the episode, The Passage. It is in the last batch of civilian ships being escorted through a star cluster by Galactica's Raptor squadrons. Luan Katrain loses her life due to radiation exposure while getting the Faru Sadan through the passage. It was first mentioned in the episode, Lay Down Your Burdens, Part 2. Topic. Freighter 212 Freighter 212 is one of the many ships to survive the destruction of the twelve colonies of Kobol by the Cylons. It was the home vessel of Luan Cat, Katrain before she joined the Galactica Combat Air Group. The fate of Freighter 212 is currently unknown. Topic. Galactica The Galactica is the featured ship of the eponymous TV show. The last of the twelve original battle stars from the First Cylon War. The ship represented Caprica as each original battle star represented one of the twelve colonies of Kobol. Topic. Galatea. One of the ship names visibly shown listed on the presidential election voting board in episode, Lay Down Your Burdens, Part 2. Topic. 
Geminen Traveler The Geminen Traveler is a bulk cargo vessel. The Cylon infiltrator Leoben Conoy is found hiding aboard. After interrogation by Lt. Kara Starbuck", Thrace, Conoy is ejected into space from the Geminen Traveler's airlock on the order of President Laura Roslin. The Geminen Traveler was mentioned in the finale of Season 2. Its fate since then is unknown as it hasn't been seen since the new Caprica colonization. A ship of apparently identical design is seen early during episode 13 season 3. Topic: <inaudible> Gemini. A large ship yet still dwarfed by Galactica, the Gemini appears as a long container transport consisting of a central hull structure affixed with numerous external cargo pods of various livery design and nomenclature. During the miniseries, Gemini is originally part of Roslin's refugee fleet before joining the Battlestar Galactica. A second Gemini freighter would be seen with it several times throughout the series after the season 1 episode, Hand of God. The ship is a carryover design of the Gemini, an ordnance freighter, from the original series. Topic. Gideon. The Gideon was featured in the episodes, Resistance, and Final Cut. It was the cargo vessel which became the focus of attention once martial law was imposed upon the fleet. When the Gideon crew refused to resupply Galactica, Col. T ordered the cargo to be taken by force which resulted in bloodshed. The media termed the event, The Gideon Massacre. The ship's name comes from a character in the Holy Bible. Gideon was a judge in the Book of Judges. Topic: <inaudible> Greenleaf. Mentioned in Epiphanies, Greenleaf was a freighter that the saboteur Asher Janik worked on before tampering with Galactica's ammunition supplies. The ship was attacked ten weeks prior to the season two episode, Sacrifice, which claimed the life of at least one person, Ray Avenal. This caused his widow, Sesha Avenal, to take hostages aboard Cloud Nine. Greenleaf was mentioned again in Lay Down Your Burdens, Part Two, Razor, and Crossroads, Part One. The ship itself was seen briefly from outer space in a flashback in Sacrifice but was only part of the hull. No establishing fleet shots have seen the design to date. Parrick One of the ship names visibly shown listed on the presidential election voting board in episode, Lay Down Your Burdens, Part 2. Topic. Hexery One of the ship names visibly shown listed on the presidential election voting whiteboard on Colonial One in the episode, Lay Down Your Burdens, Part 2. Topic. Haite Can Refinery Ship Haite Can is the fleet's Tylium processing ship and is one of the most important ships in the fleet. The ship processes raw Tylium ore into fuel for the fleet. Conditions aboard the craft are extremely dangerous and the work is grueling. In the episode, Dirty Hands, Galen Tyrrell witnesses the hardship aboard the craft where even the children and elderly are forced to work. He leads a work stoppage in protest when a teenager is seriously injured, that leaves the fleet short of vital fuel. Tyrrell demands a fleet work rotation where the people are given a change of jobs periodically to retain morale. In response, President Roslin has Tyrrell reinstate the labor union that he once led on New Caprica. In the episode, Crossroads, Part 1. The refinery ship was discovered to be leaking radiation. 
The Cylon Prisoner, Caprica 6, suggests that the Cylons were possibly tracking the radiation to stay one jump behind the refugee fleet. Repairs are begun to the ship, however Lee Adama comes up with a plan to throw off the Cylons by using the ship as a decoy by sending it along another course and once repairs are finished, the ship will rejoin the fleet at another designated jump point. In the episode, A Disquiet Follows My Soul, the captain of the Hitei Kan follows Vice President Zarek's orders to abandon the fleet as protest against Admiral Adama's order that all ships upgrade their FTL drives with Cylon technology. Afterward, Zarek is arrested and divulges the location of the ship which is later escorted back to the fleet. Inchinvel. A ship in the refugee fleet, mentioned in dialogue only, and possibly a type of medical science or hospital ship specializing in psychiatric and neurological care. In the episode, Maelstrom, after Starbuck has disturbing dreams of the Cylon Leoben, Hello suggests she see a psychiatrist on the Inchinvel. In the episode, No Exit, a brain surgeon is brought from the Inchinvel to help Samuel Anders. Topic. Kara Nixel One of the ship names visibly shown listed on the presidential election voting whiteboard on Colonial One in the episode, Lay Down Your Burdens, Part 2. Topic. Kimba Hooter Supply ship similar in design to the Geminan Traveler. It stores the last stockpiles of meat in the entire fleet. Zarek temporarily hid President Roslin in one of the ship's freezers during her escape from a Galactica jail cell, while covertly transporting her to the Astral Queen. Topic. Kia One of the ship names visibly shown listed on the presidential election voting whiteboard on Colonial One in the episode, Lay Down Your Burdens, Part 2. Majawal Majawal is featured in the episode, Scar, and is one of the fleet's large mining vessels. It appears as a series of three saucers with four large gripping claws extending downward. The ship can land on asteroids and gather ore vital to the fleet. Living conditions aboard the ship are said to be filthy and deplorable. This is, again, an example of a design from the original series being reused in the reimagined series. Topic. McConnell. The McConnell is a supply ship within the fleet that was mentioned in Black Market. The ship was one of several that Commander Fisk secretly raided and built up a personal stockpile of high-valued goods which he traded within the fleet's Black Market. Topic: <laughs> Monarch Monarch is a mining vessel that is reported as having joined Laura Roslin's splinter group in the episode, The Farm. After Duala reports its departure to Colonel T, he laments the fact that the fleet could not afford to lose miners. Monarch was mentioned again in collaborators following the Battle of New Caprica. Topic. Mutum WIA One of the ship names visibly shown listed on the presidential election voting board in episode, Lay Down Your Burdens, Part 2. Topic. Odysseus One of the ship names visibly shown listed on the presidential election voting board in episode, Lay Down Your Burdens, Part 2. Topic. Olympic carrier 
Olympic carrier is a fish-shaped civilian passenger liner, typical of many such ships used by the people of the Twelve Colonies. It is mentioned in the first episode of Season 1, 33. The Olympic carrier is supposedly carrying 1,300 colonial refugees, one of which is Dr. Amarak, a colleague of Dr. Balta, who may have known that he was involved with helping the Cylons. After the Cylon attack, the ship is compromised by the Cylons, who use it to pinpoint the fleet's location every time they make an FTL jump. Over the next few days, the fleet is attacked by Cylon base stars every 33 minutes, to the exact second. Later however, the Olympic carrier falls behind during a jump and did not return for several hours. In the meantime, the Cylons do not attack. Suddenly, the Olympic carrier reappears, the crew claim they had a problem with their FTL drive. When asked over radio how they escaped the Cylons, they give unconvincing excuses that they were let go and just lucky. Exactly 33 minutes after the reappearance of the Olympic carrier, the Cylons reappear. When they failed to follow an order by Commander Adama to stop their engines and not approach the fleet, Adama sent a colonial raptor, piloted by Boomer, flanked by Vipers piloted by Starbuck and Apollo, to scan the ship, where they detected the presence of nuclear weapons on board. Adama, with President Roslin's hesitant approval, ordered Apollo and Starbuck to destroy the Olympic carrier. After the ship's destruction, the Cylons stop attacking every 33 minutes, further indicating that the Olympic carrier was the ship they were tracking. Pegasus The Battlestar Pegasus was the second most featured Battlestar on the reimagined TV series and was encountered by the refugee fleet in the episode Pegasus. As a Mercury-class battle star, Pegasus is substantially newer, larger and more powerful than Galactica. It is nearly twice the size, but only carries around half the crew due to greater automation. Pegasus had approximately 1,753 crew members at the time it encountered Galactica. The Pegasus joins the fleet for a time until it is destroyed during the third season episode, Exodus, Part 2 while defending the colony on New Caprica. Topic. Persephone One of the ship names visibly shown listed on the presidential election voting board in episode, "'Lay Down Your Burdens' Part 2". Topic. Pican 26 The ship is not seen visually, nor is its captain. Nevertheless, it was part of President Roslin's rescue fleet before joining Galactica. Yet her captain protests Roslin's decision to abandon the sublight ships, just as the Cylons show up to attack the convoy of vessels in the miniseries. It is assumed, Pican 26 had FTL capability and jumped with the fleet as ordered. However, the ship is never mentioned again at any point in the fleet's long journey, so there exists the possibility that it didn't. Its name is also subject to contention, as in many places online it is listed as Pican 36. But if one listens to the mini-series audio carefully, the ship's captain clearly identifies his vessel as Pican 26. Topic. Pick and Princess One of the ship names visibly shown listed on the presidential election voting whiteboard on Colonial One in the episode, Lay Down Your Burdens, Part 2. Topic. Prometheus Prometheus is a cargo vessel that appeared in the episode. Black Market. The ship has an open port policy similar to Cloud Nine and became the headquarters for the fleet's black market operations. 
The black market was allowed, unofficially, to continue operations with the stipulations that there are no killings, that they don't hold back on essential medicines and their child prostitution ring is ended. The ship's name comes from Greek mythology, Prometheus the Titan who stole fire from the gods and gave it to humans. Pyxis <inaudible> 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 A civilian ship with 600 people aboard. In the fourth season premiere episode, He That Believeth in Me, the Pyxis was destroyed during the Cylon ambush at the Ionian Nebula. Radamanthes One of the ship names visibly shown listed on the presidential election voting whiteboard on Colonial One in the episode, Lay Down Your Burdens. Part two. The ship is named after Radamanthes, a king in Greek mythology who was the son of Zeus and Europa. <laughs> <laughs> Refueling tanker Also called Tanker birds. These ships can link up to Vipers and Raptors for mid flight refueling. The ships were not specifically shown on screen, but are believed to be modified Raptors with a fuel transfer system. They are mentioned in dialogue in both, You Can't Go Home Again and Occupation. There may be one or more larger tanker ships like the Haite Can, sized for refueling the fleet's bigger ships. In Home, Part 1 – The striker collides with one during a botched refueling maneuver. Resurrection Hub The Cylon Resurrection Hub was an enormous mobile base that controlled the function of all of the Cylon Resurrection ships. The ship appeared as a diamond-shaped craft with a skeletal structure similar to the Resurrection ships. In the episode, The Hub, a massive battle was engaged around it by the rebel Cylons and Colonial Viper pilots. A Raptor manages to destroy the Hub's FTL drive, thus stranding it in one spot, preventing it from escaping. While the Rebel Base Star engaged the Hub's two escort Base Star and the Colonial Vipers and Cylon Heavy Raiders engaged the enemy Raiders, the Cylon Dana Beers was unboxed. By Cavill, whom she killed, and Boomer, who runs away, and rescued by Carl. Hello, Agathon, and a copy of Number Eight. The three escape the hub on a Raptor, and Hello orders a nuclear attack on the hub. The Colonial Vipers, armed with nuclear missiles, line up and launch their nuclear missiles into the hub, destroying it in an explosion so powerful at least one of its escort base stars are destroyed too, while the other is either severely damaged or destroyed. With the Resurrection Hub destroyed, the Cylons lose their ability to resurrect forever. Topic. Resurrection Ship The Cylon Resurrection Ship is a class of Cylon FTL-equipped starship that allowed the consciousness of any Cylon, within an unspecified range, to download into a new body aboard the ship upon death. The ship appeared as an elongated vessel built as a series of spider-shaped support frames. In between the frames were levels upon levels of transparent containers each holding a humanoid Cylon body in suspended animation. The resurrection ship is first seen through reconnaissance photographs in Pegasus. As a ship that Admiral Helena Kane of the Battlestar Pegasus sees as a tempting target. In the two-parter Resurrection ship. It is identified by the copy of number six known as Gina in Vier who wishes the ship destroyed so that she can truly die. The resurrection ship is destroyed by the combined forces of the Galactica and the Pegasus, resulting in the Cylons readjusting their tactics for the rest of the second season. A resurrection ship is seen amongst the Cylon fleet throughout Season 3 and the Cylon known as Sharon Agathon launches a rescue mission for her daughter Hera by downloading into it in Rapture, 
In the same episode, all of the number threes are seen being boxed throughout one of the ships after the Cylons make the decision to box the entire number three line. In The Ties That Bind, Cavill's faction turns the Cylon civil war from a rebellion into an all-out war by ambushing the rebels without the resurrection ship being in range. After this, as the rebels possess no resurrection ship, death is final for them as noted in many episodes of the fourth season. Despite the destruction of the resurrection ship in the second season, there is a second resurrection ship in range of the fleet by the time of Lay Down Your Burdens. While not seen in the series, in the telemovie The Plan, the Galactica copy of John Cavill states to his Caprica counterpart that there is a resurrection ship in range that they will download to upon death. His comments further suggest that this copy of Cavill, previously believed to have permanently died due to the lack of resurrection ship in range, is also the same copy that led the Cylon Civil War. In the plan it is shown that resurrection ships contain new bodies for the final five as part of the Cavill's plan to show their parents the «evils» of humanity. Ellen T. downloads into one such body after her death on New Caprica as seen in «No Exit». Resurrection ships are also seen as part of the fleet that destroys the twelve colonies in the plan. In the fourth season episode, «The Hub», it was discovered that the resurrection ships were controlled by a central control ship called the Hub, which actually kept a backup of the persona for each model of Cylon. Once the Hub was destroyed, the resurrection ships were useless and no Cylon was able to resurrect after death. <laughs> Rising Star Rising Star is a hospital ship mentioned in the episode, Tee Me Up, Tee Me Down. Colonel T's estranged wife Ellen T was discovered alive aboard the vessel, having been brought aboard by a mysterious savior. It was also briefly mentioned in, 33, when the fleet's first child is born on it. Dr. Cottle is aboard the Rising Star when the Cylons arrive at Kobol, making him unable to help the seriously wounded Adama. The Rising Star appears as a sleek-looking, arrowhead-shaped starship and is another carried-over design and name from the original series to the reimagining. The most notable features are a pair of vent-like openings above the «wings» on either side of the hull, which appear to be used as landing bays for smaller craft. In the original series, the Rising Star was a luxury liner, not a medical ship. A vessel that resembles the Rising Star is also seen in Razor when the Battlestar Pegasus finds a fleet of 15 civilian ships. In No Exit, it's revealed that John Cavill is the mysterious savior responsible for Ellen ending up on the Rising Star as he wanted her to learn her lesson by spending more time amongst the humans. In the plan, the interior of the Rising Star is briefly seen during the events of 33. When Cavill commiserates on what's going on to the seriously injured Ellen. Topic: <inaudible> Sargon. One of the ship names visibly shown listed on the presidential election voting board in episode Lay Down Your Burdens Part 2. Topic. Salpica One of the ship names visibly shown listed on the presidential election voting board in episode, Lay Down Your Burdens Part 2. It was also mentioned in the extended cut of the episode, Unfinished Business, as where Samuel Anders temporarily resided in the fleet before moving aboard Galactica. Topic. Scorpia Traveler Ship that docks with Galactica in the episode, Litmus, to offload civilians and take on supplies. A copy of Cylon agent Aaron Doral disembarks this ship and commits a suicide bombing that nearly kills Commander Adama and Colonel T. Topic. Skiller 
The Scylla was one of 15 civilian transports picked up by the Battlestar Pegasus. Admiral Kane stripped the ship for spare parts and integrated its useful crew to the Pegasus. The Scylla was then abandoned with the rest of the fleet as Kane continued her pursuit of the Cylon fleet which was tracking Galactica. The ship is seen for the first time in Razor, along with a few other ships that were found by Admiral Kane. It is first mentioned in the episode, Pegasus. This ship was the ship from which Laird was originally transferred. Topic. Solaria The Solaria is a colonial Battlestar said in the miniseries to have been lost along with Battlestars Columbia and Triton. Topic. Stealth Star A colonial stealth craft, the Stealth Star was used to spy on the Cylons. In a recon mission under Adama's command, Lieutenant Daniel Bulldog Novacek piloted her beyond the armistice line. He was detected and his ship damaged, presumably by the Cylons, though the DRADIS contact was labeled as unknown. Commander Adama, under orders not to cross the boundary, decided to shoot down Novacek with a missile to avoid capture. Unknown to Adama, Novacek had ejected and was captured by the Cylons. The Stealth Star was briefly featured in a flashback sequence in the episode, Hero. <laughs> Striker A colonial vessel that collides with a fuel tanker while Captain George Catman Birch is performing the role of CAG for the Galactica. Stryker's wireless goes silent and they go into an uncontrolled spin after the collision, forcing Galactica to dispatch a repair team to the vessel. The Stryker is of the same design as the Celestra from the original series. Home. Part 1. Topic. Swordfish. One of the ship names visibly shown listed on the presidential election voting board in episode Lay Down Your Burdens Part 2 Topic <laughs> Tarbadic One of the ship names visibly shown listed on the presidential election voting board in episode Lay Down Your Burdens Part 2 Topic. Tauranian Traveller The Tauranian Traveller is a civilian transport in the fleet mentioned in a deleted scene from the episode, 33. Because of the relentless Cylon attacks every 33 minutes, President Roslin informs Commander Adama that the ship's captain is threatening to leave the fleet and take their chances on their own. Adama initially says that if any captain feels they can make it on their own, they are welcome to leave, but Roslyn deems that decision unacceptable and says there are 900 people aboard the ship and have to stay together to assure survival. Adama changes his mind and tells Roslyn that any captain wanting to defect from the fleet will be arrested. He orders Vipers to do a close flyby of the Tauranian traveler to get the message across. Theracita A civilian transport within the fleet. In the passage, the ship made it successfully through the dangerous star cluster to the algae planet. In The Woman King, some of the passengers from the ship contract Melorac disease and had to be transferred to Dogsville aboard Galactica for medical care. It was first mentioned in the final episode of Season 2. Lay Down Your Burdens, Part 2 Tora Bashiri One of the ship names visibly shown listed on the presidential election voting whiteboard on Colonial One in the episode, Lay Down Your Burdens, Part 2. The name in Japanese language means, 
Tigers Run Topic Triton Battlestar Triton, part of Battlestar Group 39, BSG 39, is said to have been lost in the miniseries along with Battlestars Columbia and Solaria. Lieutenant Alex Crashdown Quartararo served on the Triton prior to its destruction. Boomer refers to him as a refugee from Triton in the episode 33. And Crashdown's flight suit still bears a Battlestar Triton crew patch. One Starbuck had also been stationed aboard the Battlestar Triton once. Topic: <laughs> Valkyrie. A Battlestar, part of Battlestar Group 41, BSG 41, which was under Commander Adama's command prior to his command of Galactica. The Valkyrie was involved in a Black Ops recon mission to spy on the Cylons a year before their sneak attack on the colonies. The Valkyrie makes an appearance in a flashback sequence in the episode, Hero. The Valkyrie is stated as being a newer and more prestigious ship than the Galactica, and was also a different type of Battlestar than the Pegasus. The eventual fate of the Valkyrie is not known, but she is presumed to have been destroyed along with the rest of the colonial fleet except the Galactica and the Pegasus during the Cylon assault on the Twelve Colonies. In Razor, during the Cylon attack on the Scorpion fleet shipyards, two battlestars similar in class to the Valkyrie are shown to be destroyed while docked. Several Valkyrie-type battlestars, including the Valkyrie herself, were shown being destroyed during the Cylon ambush of the colonies. The Valkyrie and Yashuman attempted to engage a Cylon-based star fleet without success shortly before succumbing to the command navigation program virus that rendered their systems inoperative. Approximately one year prior to the Cylon assault on the Twelve Colonies, Commander Adama was ordered by the Admiralty to approach the Armistice Line and send over a stealth fighter piloted by Lieutenant Daniel Bulldog Novacek to test Cylon defenses and determine whether the Cylons were preparing to attack the colonies under the guise of looking for Taurons who were mining illegally over the line. After the stealth fighter was disabled on the Cylon side of the Armistice Line, and two other presumably Cylon vessels entered the area, Adama ordered the stealth star shot down with a ship-to-ship -ship missile. Unknown to Adama, Bulldog ejected from the stealth fighter before it was destroyed and was captured by the Cylon forces. Bulldog eventually escaped from the base star where he was being held and hijacked a Cylon raider back to the Galactica. However, it is later revealed that the Cylons let Bulldog escape, hoping that he would discover the true circumstances surrounding his capture and kill Adama in revenge, based on conversations in the episode, Hero. The Valkyrie was a more modern and desirable command than the soon-to-be-retired Galactica. Per Colonel T's comments, the Admiralty was displeased with the results of the stealth fighter mission and transferred both Adama and T to the Galactica as their way of greasing both of them, along with the ship, into retirement. T, a high-functioning alcoholic, relied on Adama to cover his rear for him in order to retain his commission. Vena Kappa One of the ship names visibly shown listed on the presidential election voting whiteboard on Colonial One in the episode, Lay Down Your Burdens, Part Two. Topic <inaudible> Verga. One of the ship names visibly shown listed on the presidential election voting whiteboard on Colonial One in the episode, Lay Down Your Burdens, Part Two. Possibly named for the Vergon colony. Topic: <inaudible> Vergon Express. The Vergon Express is a maintenance vessel that appeared in the episode Water. 
Like many ships its size, the Express is too small to recycle its own water supply and must replenish it from larger vessels like the Battlestar Galactica. The Express was taking on water when an explosion occurs in the Galactica water tanks. <laughs> Zephyr The Zephyr, also referred to as Space Park, is a luxury liner in the fleet. It has an unusual design reminiscent of early spacecraft used by the Twelve Colonies and consists of a massive wheel connected to a slender, central hull at the axis. The wheel contains an artificial biosphere and slowly rotates to simulate natural gravity. This unusual design is supposedly very old, when artificial gravity was too expensive on large ships, but the design proved popular and remains in use to this day. When President Roslin is being held in Galactica's brig following Commander Adama's coup, the Quorum of Twelve takes a shuttle from the Zephyr to Galactica in the hope of questioning her and restoring her presidential authority. Later, during the presidential elections shown in Lay Down Your Burdens. Part 2 Zephyr was one of the last five ships in the fleet to dispatch her ballot results to the Galactic Accounting Room. Petty Officer Duala intercepted the Zephyr's ballots and replaced them with forged ones in an attempt to swing the election in Roslyn's favor. In the fourth season premiere episode, He That Believeth in Me, Zephyr suffered severe damage to the wheel section when it was struck by missiles during the Cylon attack at the Ionian Nebula. Later episodes show that the ship is still with the fleet undergoing repairs. During the webisodes, The Face of the Enemy, which aired on the Sci-Fi.com website between seasons 4.0 and 4.5, Felix Gator and others are en route from the Galactica to the Zephyr when the fleet makes an emergency FTL jump, leaving them stranded. <laughs> Ziasudra One of the ship names visibly shown listed on the presidential election voting whiteboard on Colonial One in the episode, Lay Down Your Burdens, Part Two, named after Zirsudra, a Sumerian king. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Shipping companies. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Colonial Movers. Colonial Movers is a transport company that owned at least three cargo ships in the refugee fleet. They appear as long, cylindrical shafts to which are affixed several bulk cargo modules of various livery design and nomenclature. The slogan, We Move Anywhere, can sometimes be seen on the side. In the episode, The Hand of God, a Colonial Movers ship partook in the sneak attack of the Cylon Tylium refinery. A squadron of Vipers was hidden inside a cargo module as reserve and launched against the Cylon Tylium refinery which Apollo destroyed. In the episode, Lay Down Your Burdens, Part 2, one of the Colonial Movers vessels is destroyed during the explosion of Cloud 9. The same ship design appears in the original series. Intersun. a civilian transport company that operated among the Twelve Colonies. Intersun owned and operated the liner Colonial Heavy 798 which is renamed Colonial One after President Roslin is sworn in and takes the ship as office of the President. <laughs> Pan Galactic A civilian transport company with ships operating at the time of the Cylon attack on the Twelve Colonies. During the mini-series, at least one Pan-Galactic liner survived the attack and joined the refugee fleet. Pan-Galactic's logo is nearly identical to the now-defunct Pan-American World Airways Airlines logo and is probably a homage to 2001, A Space Odyssey, which featured an Earth-to-orbit passenger shuttle operated by Pan Am. In the third season episode, Exodus Part 2, 
One of the ships making its escape from the surface of New Caprica is seen with this logo prominently shown though upside down, from the camera's perspective. 